I'm Mark Callahan, Mr. Saltwater Tank, and this is Mr. Saltwater Tank TV. There's lots of ways to process the nutrients in a saltwater tank. You can remove them manually through water changes and protein skimmers, and you can use biological filtration such as live rock and live sand. And one of the most popular ways to process nutrients in your tank is with the use of a refugium. The concept of the refugium is simple. Grow algae in a place outside of your main display tank, such that the algae in the refugium will outcompete the algae in your display tank. When the algae in the refugium outcompetes and wins, the display algae loses and ideally can't grow. The same macroalgae in your refugium can also use the nitrates and phosphates in your tank to grow, which can help out your tank parameters. And refugiums can be a great place to grow pods for your tank and other fun bugs. Some people even use your refugiums to grow ornamental macroalgae that they sell or feed the fish in their main tank. And my friends at Vivid Aquarium use their refugium to house inverts and seahorses. Now besides nutrient export and pod farming, refugiums can also help reduce the diurnal pH swing of your tank, as during the night when the refugium light should be on, the algae is growing and sucking up CO2 in your water. During the day, the light of the refugium is turned off, and since your main lights are on, your corals take up the job of sucking up excess CO2. There's three main ways that refugiums are set up. In the sump, hang on back, and remotely. But there's a catch to all of them. I believe that refugiums are great for growing pods for your tank, but they don't do all that much for your nutrient control unless your refugium is really, really big. Now, most sumps that I see under people's tanks are pretty small compared to the overall tank. Then there's a couple inches of that sump that's dedicated to a refugium. So we're expecting these couple of inches of refugium to handle all the nutrients and the waste from the big tank up above. That's like strapping an outboard motor to a big cruise ship and sitting there going, we're not getting very far, and I wonder why. Well, no kidding. You can't expect these couple of inches of a refugium to take over the load of the big tank. Now, I personally experienced this on my first 55 gallon tank where I put on a hang on back refugium. I put miracle mode in there, put in all the algae like I was supposed to, and saw no drop in phosphates or nitrates in my tank. The reason being, the refugium just wasn't big enough to handle the load for the big tank. And the same holds true for diurnal pH swings. Unless you have a really big refugium, you're not gonna see that much of a dent on your swing. It might make some difference, but certainly don't expect it to solve all your pH swing problems. Now, best case scenario is that you would have a large remote refugium to handle the load of the big tank, like this 500 gallon one that you see here. That would be best case. Now that doesn't work for everyone. Now, I'm not saying don't put in a refugium, I'm just saying be realistic with your expectations for what it's gonna do for your tank. Let's talk about in sump refugiums because they're by far the most popular. I like seeing a refugium in a sump in between your skimmer box and your return pump. The reason for this is, if any bubbles get out of your skimmer and through the bubble trap, they're gonna get caught in their refugium. So your refugium is not only processing nutrients from your tank, but it's also keeping those annoying micro bubbles out of your display tank. Here are some tips for setting up your refugium, no matter what type of setup you go with. Number one, I don't recommend sand or miracle mud in them. The reason being that the sand always seems to blow out and most of the time, there isn't enough sand or miracle mud to really do its job. Instead, I use live rock rubble in my refugium. It's easy to clean and makes for added biological filtration for my tank. Number two, I do run the lights over my refugium counter to my main tank. That means at night, the fuge light comes on and my main lights go off. And during the day, the fuge light goes off and the main lights come on. Now, as far as lighting your fuge, low Kelvin bulbs are great and you don't need fancy lighting to grow your algae in your refugium. I use a compact fluorescent bulb that I picked up at Home Depot like this one. Its K rating is really low, which means that it grows my algae really fast. And just like regular compact fluorescent lighting, every six months it needs to be replaced, but it's only a couple dollars, so I don't even think twice about it. When it comes to choosing what type of algae you want in your refugium, there's two main types that people go with. Chato or Cato algae, and then there's Calerpa algae. Now let's talk about both of them because there's a raging debate among saltwater tank hobbyists about which ones you should put in your refugium. Cato algae looks like a ball of hair. It grows in on itself and you often see it sold as a ball of Cato algae. Now I have that in my refugium and I also have the other type of macroalgae, Calerpa algae. Now Calerpa looks like a little branch or a vine with little clusters of grapes growing off of it. For the large part, that's what Calerpa looks like. Now, people who don't like chlorpa algae say it's dangerous because it can go sexual and trash your tank if it does. And two, if it gets into your tank, it be can become invasive and take over. Now, since I've run both of these, let me address the chlorpa debate. 
Number one, I've never had it go sexual. Usually it goes sexual when it gets stressed or doesn't get enough light. I keep the Home Depot squiggle light like you saw earlier in the video. That's what fires up and powers my refugium. I've had that light off for days on end sometimes and my Chlorpa's never gone sexual. And as far as any Chlorpa getting up into my main tank, if any does happen to get up there somehow, my purple tank goes nuts. He chases after it, he gobbles it up. It's like a feast form. Every now and then I'll take a piece of live rock out of my refugium that's got some Chlorpa on it, chunk it in my main tank and let my purple tank have a heyday. He loves it. So Chlorpa algae, I run it with the Cato algae in my refugium. I found that the Chlorpa grows faster and I'm perfectly happy with it. I've never had a problem with it going sexual and if it does get into my tank, pff, not a problem. My algae eaters take over. Now, one thing to keep in mind, some states, including the state of California, they will not let you import Chlorpa algae. It's illegal to keep it because it is an invasive species. In the ocean, it can absolutely take over a section of the reef if it's in the right area. Now, again, in my tank, I've never had that problem. I'm not worried about it but check your state regulations, and if you are running chlorpa algae in your tank, don't just toss it down your drain or throw it in the trash thinking it's gonna go away. If I'm gonna throw any of it away, I leave it out in the sun, let it thoroughly die, and then bury it in my yard. So, chato algae or chlorpa algae, it doesn't make a difference to me. I run both, both with great results. Take your pick, whatever works for you. And of course, there's always some ornamental types like dragon's breath and uh, mermaid's cup, I believe it's called. Those are great to look at, I don't grow those in my refugium because I don't have a sand bed. And me growing ornamental algae, eh, it's not for me. Nothing wrong with it, but it's just not my thing. The last tip I would give you about setting up a refugium is that I like to set them up with medium to low flow going through them. I don't know where we got this idea that our sumps and refugiums need to be raging rivers of flow. So do I like refugiums for growing algae to feed my fish and growing pods to feed my fish? Yes. Are they a silver bullet for nitrate, phosphate, and nuisance algae control in your main tank? No, and certainly not if you have a heavily stocked main display tank. There's simply not enough refugium to handle the load from the tank. Now again, I'm not saying don't set one up. I'm just saying set one up with the expectations for what it's realistically gonna do for you. I'm Mark Callie in Mr. Saltwater Tank. This has been Mr. Saltwater Tank TV. Until next time, have a good one, enjoy your tanks, and know your tank personality. <laughs>